Hi. This week I thought I'd talk about uh, my uh, wife's uh, 2004 Moto Guzzi Breva. Uh, we've had this uh, since new and it primarily serves as a commuter and has done nearly 100,000 kilometres. It's just a couple thousand k short of the 100,000 kilometre mark. So it's uh, done remarkably well and uh, I suppose we've owned it now if since 2004 for really 15 years uh, this year. So it's uh, been uh, pretty good. There's been uh, very few issues with it. Uh, I'll go into those a little bit later. But first I thought I'd talk about what it's like to ride. It's um, a pretty torquey motor. The uh, original uh, design that this is based on is the V35, which was a 350 uh, frame and engine designed by Lino Tonti, who designed the Tonti frame that uh, was used in the V7 Sport, the early V7 Sport, the S3, the S, the Le Mans 1 through to 5, and uh, also uh, the Californias of that era. So, uh, you know, Tonti had quite a lasting effect on the factory, considering that that original 350 has uh, grown up into a 750 here, and it's still, uh, I guess, is present today in the in the new. Uh, Romas and such like that are being released by Moto Guzzi. But um, performance wise, uh, it's really a fairly torquey motor. It doesn't have that much horsepower, but uh, it's very easy to live with and ideal for uh, riding in, in city traffic. But then again, it's also pretty good through nice twisty roads for a nice relaxed uh, fang through the hills. The uh, braking is taken care of with a uh, four-pot Brembo up front on a large disc and a smaller two-pot Brembo on the back. The suspension is really non-adjustable for damping, front or back. The front has no adjustment for preload either, but the uh, rear shocks are adjustable for preload. At the moment, they're just left on their uh, factory settings, and for my wife, uh, it seems to be fine. And when I ride it, I'm actually quite pleased with it and I really enjoy riding it and would certainly recommend the small block experience to uh, Moto Guzzi owners of uh, big blocks and uh, people who have never ridden a Moto Guzzi. They're actually very pleasant to ride uh, and, uh, and a delightful experience. Now, uh, over the uh, 15 years that we've owned this uh, motorcycle, we haven't had much in the way of problems with it. We have had a, a, a few, uh, I suppose, minor issues. Uh, now, the, 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 the most obvious problem that we had was cosmetic in that the uh, chrome plating on the exhaust system disappeared fairly quickly in the first couple of years. Now, it's purely cosmetic and it hasn't caused any uh, structural damage, but uh, the chrome on uh, most of these small blocks disappeared pretty quickly. The big blocks of this uh, era used stainless headers, but um, on these they were obviously saving a little bit of money and um, just chromed mild steel and um, the finishes come off the header pipes and also the underside of the, uh, the mufflers. Now, other issues that we've had, uh, the engine does use a bit of oil and it's actually used oil from new. The sump doesn't actually hold that much oil on this particular model. It holds about 1.7 litres, which is uh, not really that much. So I'd certainly advise if you own a small block to keep an eye on the oil level. We check this one uh, either once a week or once a fortnight, depending on how much it's ridden. At the moment it does roughly three days a week of uh, about 60 kilometres a day. So I find after about two weeks the oil level has snuck down a bit. I can't really say that it's consuming much more oil now after 100,000 kilometres than it did when it was new. It probably is consuming a little bit more but um, it's pretty hard to tell. I didn't keep records and it's certainly not an, an obvious difference. Uh, the only other problem we've had with it uh, We've had a couple of uh, electrical issues in that the uh, fuel warning light, which indicates when the tank is low, has failed at the moment. I haven't got around to fixing that. I'll have a look at that next time I change the fuel filter. One of the other issues we had was the neutral switch. We're up to our third neutral switch and it's uh, at the back of the gearbox here, just underneath the battery, and uh, it requires a little bit of contortion to actually get it out. You can't actually remove the plate 
the battery plate easily that's sitting on top of it, but you can slide it to one side and wangle it out. I've changed that myself once and it's been changed twice by the dealer earlier on in its life. So far it's been pretty good for a while. The uh, final issue we had was uh, with the bike cutting out on the freeway. It started as a occasionally doing it and became slightly more frequent, but it was always an intermittent problem which made it very hard to track down. But I did notice that the one of the springs, there's two springs on the side stand, one inside the other, that one of the springs had come off. So I thought maybe the side stand was moving up and down as the bike hit bumps, causing the safety interlock, because there's an interlock with the side stand, the clutch lever and the neutral light, so that uh, you can't start the engine while it's in gear without the clutch in, or you can't put it into gear while the side stand is down. Now that spring had come off, I replaced that, the bike appeared to run fine for a week and then the fault resurfaced. So I bypassed the side stand safety switch for a couple of weeks and the fault appeared to go away. So I replaced that switch and um, of course the fault came back again in another couple of weeks. This time I looked a little further and discovered that the connectors on the two interlock relays and the diode block which sort of does the, the logic of, uh, of what you can and can't do regarding starting and, um, and, and moving off, were dirty and I also had my suspicions about the two relays. So I replaced those two relays, cleaned all the contacts and the bike's been fine since. So um, in the scheme of things, after 15 years of ownership, we really can't complain about major issues. There's been nothing wrong with the engine, it uh, performs beautifully after 100,000 Ks. The gearbox does appear a little noisier than when it's new, but the gearboxes in these Brevas uh, were noisy, a little bit noisy from new. There was always a, been a whine in this uh, gearbox from new, from, from what I can recall. In regards to servicing, it's pretty easy to do most of the major service tasks yourself. Adjusting the valve clearances is pretty straightforward. Uh, changing the oil is pretty straightforward, though there are two drain plugs on the sump. There's one at the front and the back of the sump. Uh, the filter itself is a cartridge type that goes uh, up underneath an access uh, panel underneath the sump. Uh, one tip I would say is that the crush washers on the uh, three bolts, the two sump plugs and the bolt that holds the filter cover on, should be changed every uh, service or so because they can leak and also the o-ring that's uh, underneath the cover that holds the oil filter unit should also be changed probably every second service if you want to avoid it leaking. Uh, uh, the, uh, the rest of the servicing changing the air cleaner element it comes out the front underneath the tank the tank doesn't have to be removed for that you just have to remove a bit of trim it's actually quite easy to get out the only difficult service item I would say would be the fuel filter and uh, if you live in an area with fairly clean fuel like we do uh, I don't really change that uh, very frequently it, you know every three or four services I'll pull the tank off and change that the oil for the gearbox and the bevel drive is pretty easy to check as well so all in all servicing is a pretty straightforward affair there are a couple little uh, tricks in regards to the um, throttle body balances. It's not quite like uh, adjusting a, a twin pair of carburetors in that uh, there are some bypass screws there as well. So just read up on how to do that before adjusting anything in regards to the throttle bodies on these. Otherwise, uh, you'll just get it wrong. But uh, in conclusion, I'd just like to say that um, Owning this uh, motorcycle uh, has been um, a good experience for both of us and uh, my wife is certainly very pleased with it and it's been an ideal commuter. The seat is exceptionally comfortable. It's probably one of the most comfortable seats that I've sat on and um, it's uh, very much a fit for purpose motorcycle as a commuter and as a enjoyable country ride. I'll see you next time.